So this is Jason with Gestalt Media. I'm here with The Witch, Ryan Leslie, and we're going to talk to you today about your series, your Started with River, and how to write for a series specifically. So okay. our first question is, uh, River is going to be a 10 book series, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so talk a little bit about how do you plan for a project that large? How do you set out with your first novel knowing that you have an entire series to accomplish by the end? Well, it all happens within a year. So it's all happening, happening all together. So it's not like, I mean, it obviously months have passed, but when one is happening, you know, in river, it's also happening in fate. And so it's kind of like a continuous thing that I keep, I, I keep all the documents open on my laptop. And if I add something in one, then it goes it's like a domino effect and it goes in the other. It's kind of like, it would be like a journal, you know, you got to do a journal entry and, um, I know it can be very sloppy sometimes. I do admit that, but I just, I don't know. It just, it's like this long, continuous, continuous thread for me. Okay. Uh, so when you started, did you already know where the end was going to be? I didn't know where the end was going to be, but it was only going to be five books. But okay. because my word count was outrageous, um, I, it was suggested that I turn River into two books. And I'm like, that's not going to work because there's only five books. But then as I started going down the line, you know, the third book is like 140 K. And so that's automatically two books. So it just, that's why it went into 10. It was only supposed to be five, okay. but there's five, six main characters. River isn't the only main character. She's like the okay. main main, but there are other main characters that come in and we kind of veer off onto their path and it all kind of, you know, centers around what's going on okay so did you end up adding anything to the yes. story like fleshing yes. it out a little more yes um there there was this character that kept coming up um in like the third and fourth book and he, he just kept coming up and coming up and i thought he needs his own story he needs his own book he needs to be a main character too and so it's just this random character and so i went back into river and i started looking to where i could add him and then in fate I, I mention him in a very kind of vague sort of way, but as each book goes, you start getting more and more with this character, but you don't know who it is. You don't find out who it is until, I don't know, the fifth book, the end of the fifth book, you suddenly realize who this character is because I give all these little teasers and stuff like that, but I wasn't expecting that. I had a set plan. It was River. It was the other main characters. They had to get to the end. This is the beginning. They had to get to the end. It's very basic, very simple, but then you know, all this other stuff just kind of started, you know, coming in. Um, it, you know, the world is very big, you know, it's, you know, we're, we're on earth and this is where the ebb is. The ebb is hidden within the outside human world, but this isn't the only world in the series. It's like there's planes of reality and the plane we live on is called the karma plane and there's four worlds within it. And so they're all very similar you know, they're not going to be like totally outrageous. They're all different creatures and stuff like that. But I, I have to bring in the other three worlds. But of course, I got to do it in a way that, you know, it's not going to bore somebody. And, you know, because, you know, I have a very tiny little window to keep my audience. So it, I don't know. It just keeps growing. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And how I keep it all, you know, what I have to do. Obviously, I use OneNote which is, you know, an excellent tool for writers. Real, especially in a series, you know, it has all these different folders and stuff on the computer. I handwrite my notes, but I'm a visual person. So I have a big poster board, several poster boards on, on my wall. And across the top are the sticky notes of each book. And then under it, or, or above it, excuse me, are the like, I don't know, 12 to 15 events that have to happen no matter what. No matter what else happens, they have to happen to get to the end. And then under each book is the sticky notes of what main event or whatever. But then, you know, they can go anywhere. I, I still, the third book, you know, she's taking me somewhere where I wasn't expecting. I mean, I, I know a lot of people are, you know, they know what they want to do. They're like pantsers and stuff, but, or plotters. But I'm more of a pantser, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. No, answer? I totally get that. Um, I'm sure the answer was somewhere deep in there. Um, 
No, that makes a lot of sense. So it sounds like you keep pretty meticulous notes um, and you have your story worlds in mind, but you're saying that it evolves as you're writing, the yes. characters are growing, the worlds are growing. Yes. Um, that in mind, do you think you're going to be able to stop when you get to 10 books? Well, I won't stop with 10 books. There's 10 main books, but okay. I'm also writing the books that are in the series. Um, there are four history, historic, I call them Historia tombs, and there's the Warrior Codex, there's the Book of Whispers for the Witches, you know, there's all these other little books that I'm going to do for that. And also I'm doing anthologies whenever I get a chance um, that are different stories, like in the past, that whatever happened in that event, that short little event actually affects a river to this day. Um, so, no, I, I, I feel like I'm going to be working on this for the rest of my life. I am going to be working <laughs> on this for the rest of my life. That might not be the worst thing. There's no. a lot of people struggle with ideas, so you won't ever have that issue. No, yeah. um, you mentioned an anthology. You just did one, correct? I did. I did. What's it called? Havenless. And that's it's, your story. I'm sorry, what? That's your story in the anthology. Yes, From Ashes to Magic, uh, Supernatural Beings Anthology. Mickey Noble invited me, and I wrote a cute little was well, not cute a little story for her um very tragic very emotional um it's about an event that takes place i don't know it's like 500 400 years ago um and just this one tiny you know seemingly innocent event that echoes all the way down to river and <laughs> something happens on this in during this story that is a huge huge sort of secret or um forewarning of what river has to deal with hmm. and so as as the series go on she starts to pick up all these clues and they start to really dig for these answers and she comes across someone had written a journal this the havenless story and she comes across it and she realizes you know something she's been looking for it was told in the story so you know i hope to do many anthologies like that to where i can add little clues and so by the time i get to the 10th book I'll run a really big contest contest and everyone has to go hunt up my anthologies and they've got to find it. But there's only gonna be 10 anthologies for the series. I've got a thing with numbers. 10 books, oh, 10 anthologies. So would you recommend somebody read Havenless before they start your series or during your series, or should they wait? Um, they can read it whenever. Um, I would prefer they read River first, but it's not it it's they're not going to get it until they read this, until they read Fate, what mm -hmm. Havenless is about, but they could read River or they can read Havenless first. Um, but I would prefer they read River, then Fate, and then Havenless, but, you know, they can, you know, Havenless is a standalone story. Um, mm -hmm. They could read it any time, but they're really not going to understand the gravity of it until they read Fate. Okay, cool. That's like a <laughs> it sounds like it. It sounds very complex. Um, and that's another thing I, I wanted to talk to you about. Um, your The worlds that you put together are very complex. Yeah. And that hasn't come across yet. And so are the characters. Okay. Um, so a lot of the feedback that comes off of River and what we've noticed in our sneak peeks of fate, um, which everybody needs to needs to read, is that your characters are not your typical characters. They're not um, cardboard cutouts. They're not uh, Hollywood approved. They're definitely not PC. Um, why, why did you do that? Why did you choose to I, come from such a realistic point of view? Well, um, I wanted to write a book that my kids would actually read. You know, I read to my kids when, since they were babies all the way up, and they slowly got out of that love for reading. And the books that were geared toward them they were boring and these long passages and they just wouldn't pay attention and it pushed them away from their love for reading and when my daughter entered high school I wanted to write a book that she would actually sit down and read and be a part of um, even with the Harry Potter books I mean she got bored with them so quick because it, she, there was nothing relatable to her in those books even though I love the Harry Potter books um, she just couldn't she just is boring to her so I wanted to write characters that she would actually become invested in and stick with. That was the main thing. 
that she can relate to. If a kid reads a book, a teenager reads your book, and they can't relate to anything in it, they're not going to read it unless you force them to. They really aren't. They don't have to. So I, I wanted, you know, I get one chance to make an impression, and I wanted to make it realistic. Hmm. A lot of people don't like that. Well, a lot of people do like that. Um because I know, uh, speaking from what you were just saying, it was the same deal. It's like when I was in high school, you had to go, like I had to start with Stephen King when I was like 14, just to get anything that wasn't insulting yes. to, your, to your intelligence. And anything written for teenagers sounded like it came straight out of the 50s. I'm like, no one talks like that. No one acts like that. I, I've never, I don't, I would never act the way those characters did or be afraid of the things that they were afraid of or be clueless. And it was, it's a real turnoff. So it is. Especially with, kids today, especially with kids today, they have literally been exposed to every single thing that, you know, us as adults are just now getting exposed to. They have been exposed to everything. Why would I give them a book that's like talking down to them and it's boring? They're, I mean, seriously, you've got to think about it. I, I wrote it like I was writing a book just for her and she loves it. That's all that matters. And I believe the series um, grows as they go. So uh, if your audience was to start, say, 15, River is about 15, 16. Mm -hmm. She's 17. River's 17. 17. Um, yeah. So I believe it, it kind of follows along so they can they can continue to read this as they grow older and it'll stay relevant. Yes. Yes. And it's and, you know, adults love it. Um, you know, there's a whole sort of, you know, everyone loved Twilight, so I'm kind of snagging those readers. It's a little more, you know, in Twilight, it's, again, it was very PG. So mine are not PG, especially when we get to the sex and stuff like that. So um, I'm, I'm trying to steal those, steal those readers over because, you know, everyone loves the Warriors. <laughs> well, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm and love the warriors some of the men love the warriors too a few of them yeah some of the warriors love the warriors and that's yes that's fine that's and you know that was the, that was the thing you know someone had asked me are you sure you want to have um a gay warrior couple and because mm -hmm. i do i have a gay warrior couple and i'm like well of course i mean why oh, wouldn't i and it's not even and i make it very um accepting you know the fairs or the ebb, they don't have the prejudice that the humans do. They don't see color. They don't see sex. They only have one religion. There is no, there's just no other religion. You're either good or you're bad, the light or the dark. And when they mate for life. So sometimes your mate is born in the same sex. They don't see it like that. Because, you know, River's like, you know, oh my God, you have gay here, you know, because you know she's 17 and that's what she would call it. And they're like, what is gay? And she's like, Okay, maybe they call it something else. And she's like, a, you know, warrior is with the warrior. And they're like, she's like, what do you call it? And they're like, a claim. You know, it, it goes over their head because when they go to the outside some one time, several, they go out a lot, but, um, and she takes some of them with her and they see other gay couples or they come across people that are against gays, you know, with my warrior couple that comes out and it's just very shocking to them um, hmm. because it just never occurs to them. They have other things to worry about. They literally do not care about that stuff. Sounds and like I, a better I, world. It, it is. It's totally a better world. I want to go live there in the ebb. I get out of this. No politics, well, no nothing like that. Well, that's why we write the book so that we can experience something a little bit uh, that's right. better. Um, that being said, uh, Fate comes out on December the 5th. Yep. So, uh, what can we expect from the characters that we met in River, well, uh, without giving away too much? Okay, so River was the setup, the sweet setup, introducing you to everything. Um, Fate is gonna, we get really serious real quick. Um, up until this point, and it's, it's very, I think this is why it's so traumatic for River, because up until this point, for a whole month she, that she's been in the ebb, it's just been very, you know, just living life, you know, it just, you know, tending the earth and, and just being with one another and talking. And she's really had no, you know, sort of exposure to anything bad until she goes to the palace in River. And even then, it's she still doesn't realize what's fixing to happen. And at the end of River, Wolf does tell her 
that they have to talk about her purpose. He knows what's coming and she didn't want to talk about it. Um, and she kind of distracted him. And then the very next day, you know, Wicked and Ghost show up at the Banyans. So Wolf knew what was coming, but you know, even he was shocked by what happened. Um, I open up fate to a very bloody battle scene. You know, I think it's the first seven, eight chapters. Um, it's just one shocking thing after another. And so by the time it's all over with, River is just like. Again, she's like 17 and she's been to war or something. You know, she's just like standing up there at the end and it would, she's got to remember she's only 17 and she's like, oh my, she's covered in blood, you know, literally she's covered in blood and she's just like, what the hell just happened? So her having to deal with all that, that's nothing compared to what's coming because then she finds out who she really is. You know, everyone knows her as River. But, you know, people talk about, you know, the dynamic between River and her mother, how it's this perfect angsty sort of relationship, but they don't realize that the, the hatred between them goes centuries deep. And I, I think I can say that. I, I put that out on one of the musings. You know, River's only 17, but, you know, she, she's, she's done other things. She just doesn't remember them. She doesn't remember them because her mom suppressed her. And she kept having to do it. It's kind of like Men in Black, where they keep zapping the light. And you're like, stop doing that. Well, her mom kept having to do it because River's spirit was so strong. She messed up her mind. She messed up the memories. She, River should know all of this stuff that Wolf has to tell her. She should know it all. That Kat has to tell her, that Jade has to tell her, that Ruby has to tell her. And she doesn't know it. She can't remember it. So when this stuff happens, she's just, you know, she, I mean, she's literally shell-shocked. She finds out who she really is, what she, who she was before this life. And it's just, it's just ugly. And it just continues to go down. And then, I mean, there's a lot of fun stuff and there's funny stuff in there. You know, she gets hand fasted and, you know, we get our first sex scene, which is really funny. Um, but, you know, she, again, she's 17. So I remember when I was 17 and the humor with that, you know, I have to put the humor in there. But um, with Kat, people ask me about Kat. He, their dynamic changes. Um, I touched on a lot how he's her royal for life, um, her guardian. And she has several instances where she, you know, forces him to be the royal when he wants to be a warrior and protector and she doesn't let him. So that kind of causes like a wedge and then there's another big shocking event that happens to somebody else around them that comes out of nowhere um and that brings a whole different dynamic it brings characters um, even with the witches um which means the reaper so because of what happens what they reveal about this character um it's again, it's a whole nother, you know, I just keep throwing shit at you. I mean, it's 13 days of fucking hell, 13 days of fucking hell. For me. And at the end of it, it's even a horrible ending. So at the end of it, I want my readers to go, oh my God, because I've been hinting along about, you know, people know that Kat's girl, crying girl, she's always been dreaming about her, but they don't know who she is. Well, River finally finds out who she is. And it's just God awful. Awesome. <laughs> I feel like I'm sitting here rambling. Just let me ramble. No, no, absolutely. That's that's the best. The less work I have to do, the better. <laughs> um, that's an awful lot to put in. Are you sure you're going to have enough to go for the other? What, you got eight more after that? Oh, my God. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like I have, you know, the, cool, the one thing I want to do is I can take any event in our actual history and I can take it back and tell you the story of what really happened. It's not because humans were fighting against humans. It's because they had found out about the ebb and my species. And, you know, we're a suspicious lot. And so it's actually caused by my creatures. So I bring in all these things like urban myths and the Bermuda Triangle and every cool thing that you can think of in history. I bring it in in like a really cool, funny way. And it's like, oh, that's what happened. Because River and her group are finding this out. And she's, because River was a human for 12 years. She's like, holy shit. I thought that was fake. I thought it was an urban myth. So I've got all that stuff to come in. So I have, and it's all connected. Every single thing is connected. This is the beginning and you got to go all the way down to the end. But I promise it's going to be very fast paced. I'm not going to bore you. I want to make you laugh. There's a lot of, I have to have the humor in it because like the third book, it's, it was even darker than fate. It's like three times as dark as fate, really emotional. And 
but you know, the fourth book, I, it turns funny because, you know, some things that happen, it's like really, really funny. I'm gonna make people laugh at that one because they're gonna need it after the third one because they're gonna be heartbroken. Hmm. But yeah, no, I've got plenty of material. I could go further than 10, but I, I again, I have a thing on numbers. It's like 10 and there's 20 chapters in each book and there's gonna be 10 anthologies. All the books that I'm writing with it add up to 10. There's a couple of day books and stuff like that. So um, I just have a serious thing with numbers, but I could, I could go on ever. There are so many characters. Also, I did the tweet. So I asked mm -hmm. people on Twitter if they wanted to be immortalized in my series. So yeah. I have an Excel spreadsheet of, I don't know, 100, 150 characters that I'm going to somehow bring in of people that I've met online. They're all going to be in the series as we go along. I mean, it's 10 books. Jesus Christ. I mean, I've got so much space to fill. The first five books are written totally. Huh. The other ones, you know, it's, you know, it keeps changing. I know the very last line of the very last book. How I get there, it's like very vague. It's very vague. I don't, I don't want to say, oh, I've got to do this, this, and this. But, you know, the last book, it's one battle scene. So think about 20 chapters. And it's one battle scene. So I that's gonna be fucking that's epically failure, or it's gonna be a fucking beauty. I don't know. It's one battle scene, the tenth book. Technically it's like nine books leading up to the tenth book. There you go. That's, so it's like uh the battle of Hogwarts, but bigger. Yes, yes. But this is battle of the world, because the humans gotta come in. We got four worlds. An angel, my bad bitch, she's orchestrating everything. But then you find out that she's not really the thing you should be scared of. She's not the bad guy. There's this other thing. You know, everyone has a weakness. Angel mm -hmm. has one weakness. And when you find out what it is, you'd be like, okay, I'll just take Angel. Let me just do it. Well, I don't want this stuff. <laughs> you know how Hanson likes to write like creepy stuff? I go creepy. I go really, really creepy. I don't know anything about Hanson, so uh, I know too much about Hanson, most likely. Um, so, so skipping that, um, that does bring up a good uh, good subject. Is how do you stay immersed in this world for this long? Like, how do you keep that going? Um, As a writer, you know, it's very easy for me to do that. You know, um, I do get sometimes where it seems like it, it, that's a lot of books and I have to like change. And so I am writing uh, another series just for myself, the Dark Trinity series um, to kind of like change up my mind and stuff like that. But then, I'll, you know, I did that the other day and I ended up writing a scene for the fourth book. So I can never stray from it. Um, how I how I really help myself with that is music. Um, I have every character has their own music list. All the main characters have their own music list. And then each book has their own musical album that sets the tone. And so I just listen to that music. I, you know, I love listening to music. I, I would rather listen to music than watch TV or anything. And, you know, my son brings me a lot of music. He always has me listen to all this music. And I can't listen to anything new when I'm in that mode. Um, you know, for fate, it's just been Peter Gundry. It's been nothing else unless I'm having a scene with one of the characters and then I listen to their personal song. So that really helps me. Um, I've trained myself. So when, as soon as I hear it, I'm that person, I go right there. There's no issues and I can just stay in there. Um, I don't let myself think too much about the future, about I've got to do this, this, and this. I just kind of let, you know, just stay in the moment. All right. Oh, is that kitty? Yes, that the is. City is insane, man. That is the invader who came to make sure that we were doing a good job today. Um. So, if you were giving advice to other writers who are trying to pull off a series, especially one this large, one this ambitious, do you have anything you would suggest out the gate other than don't do it? Um, <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Save yourself I'm, the trouble. I don't. I don't have a choice. Okay. You know, I. I will say, okay, I'm not doing this. I want to do something else, and I'll start dreaming about them. I was doing it last night. You know, I told you that I wasn't going to get into the third one until January, but last night, 
you know, I wake to find myself, I wake up and I'm like in this scene. I'm like, seriously, I can't. So I had to get up at like four this morning and write it. I couldn't, but um, advice, you know, I have to ask myself every day, how bad do I want it? You know, I write it on my mirror. How bad do you want it? Because it's so easy to get distracted. It's so easy to say, you know, I'll just do that tomorrow. Um, but I have to ask myself, how bad do I want it? And I want it really, really bad. So you need to ask yourself that. If you don't want it bad enough where it's like a hobby, then it's just a hobby. Don't worry about it. I actually envy writers that just write for themselves because that's got to be very, I don't know, kind of beautiful. Um, you know, I have like this driving, just this driving need to succeed with this. I will succeed with this. You know, I don't let the doubt come in. So, um, I mean, how bad do you want it? I don't really know what else to say. I, I know a lot of people wouldn't do the stuff I do. You know, I'm so, very different. <laughs> I I, that's, that's, that's definitely true. Sacrificing and innocence. So, you know, tears, it kind of keeps me, keeps me motivate, motivated. You know what I'm saying? But I wouldn't suggest anybody else do that. Okay. Um, well, I would say that you are a success. Um, you got your first one picked up twice. It was good enough to nice. it's good enough to get attention and then it was good enough to get stolen because we had to have it. Yeah. It's just that it good. Yeah, well no, fate is the second one. I said it was fate. Yeah, I know. I was making a very bad joke. It was a very bad joke. Very bad. I'm not surprised. Uh, Go ahead. So I would call that success. But I, I am gonna do um a, a tiny bit of a contest, you know. Um we did a huge thing for River. I did 13 days of curses. I'm not going to do that again. That was a lot of work. Um, but um, yeah, I'm going to do something. I have I have something in the works. I will, you know, as we get closer to it, I'm sending a musing out every two uh, two a week. That is like a build up my newsletter, but it's not a newsletter. It's actually this little story I do that builds up to her release. And then the very last musing will have the very last scene in River. So you're right there at that point. Um, with River, I did the selfies with River hashtag. Um, I would like to do that with Fate, but I kind of feel like I want to do something different with her. You know, I've been throwing around a couple other ideas. I do want to see people with their with their copies, but I did that for River, and I feel like I need to do something. With them. Okay. Um, how can people get your your musing, your newsletter? How can they subscribe to that? They go to RyanLeslie.com and swear their fealty to me, and they will get it. Any blood sacrifices or anything like that? Yeah. They have yes. to give me their email and blood. Absolutely. And also you're going to send out signed copies. They can buy signed copies from you. That'll be signed in my inky blood. That's true. And that is on gestaltmedia.com, which mm -hmm. is more than likely where they'll be seeing this video. If not, then they can look down below and I'm sure the link will be there. That's Hopefully. It if it's not, go to gestaltmedia.com and <laughs> just type it in. It's not that hard. Uh, do you have anything to say to your viewers or your fans? Or um, any news, anything upcoming you want to talk about? If you want me to send you a Christmas card, you need to get a hold of me, DM me, instant instant message me, and give me your address. I'm building a Christmas card list for my followers that I'm going to send out personal Christmas cards. So if you would like to receive one from the witch, sign up somehow. Give it to me. Um, I don't know. Everyone pretty much knows how to find me. You know? Or join my Haven, the Haven Facebook group. That's a lot of fun. We talk about food mostly. It's supposed to be for River, but you know, yeah, we just end up normally talking about weekend plans, alcohol, or food. It's pretty much what we talk about. We're kind of cool like that. Sounds like a good time. <laughs> I'm have that was great. That. All right. And so uh, with that, I think we'll save ourselves the trouble and save our audience, and we'll. We'll call it there. So this was Jason Stokes and Gestalt Media with Ryan Leslie, The Witch, talking about her upcoming book, Fate, and the entire River series, which you can get on Amazon, gestaltmedia.com, or ask for it at your local bookstore. They'll, they'll be happy to order it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you.